Welcome back to my complete TART course for beginners and beyond. This video contains the fourth chapter of my course and I've decided to share this for free here on YouTube. And if you're serious about learning DART, you should consider buying my full course on Udemy. This will include over 8 hours of content and comes with premium support as well as a complete reference ebook about DART. And you can buy the full course for a discounted price by typing this URL in your browser. Ok, so let's get started. In this section we are going to learn about the various control flow statements that are available in Dart. Control flow statements are very important and you can find them in every programming language because they allow us to write programs that can make decisions and run some code based on some conditions. So as part of this we will learn about if and else statements, while and for loops, switch statements and enumerations. And we will also talk about break and continue, which are special keywords that we can use inside loops and switch statements. As usual, we will do some exercises so that you can practice all the new material. Ok, so let's get started. In this lesson, we are going to learn about if and else statements. If and else statements are very important because they allow us to write programs that make decisions and run some code based on some conditions. So if a certain condition is true, we're going to do some things, otherwise we'll do some other things. So here's an example. Suppose that you have a ticket office and you need to issue customers with their entry ticket based on their age. So if the age is less than 16, then we want to print these two statements. Junior ticket and price is $8. Otherwise, if the age is 60 or more, then we can print senior ticket and price is $6. Otherwise, we should print regular ticket and price is $10. And regardless of age, we should always print enjoy your visit. So let's see how we can implement a program like this in Dart. So here is an empty program with some comments telling us what we need to do. And because all this logic is based on the age, at the top we need to define a const age variable equals to 14, for example. And this variable can be const because it's initialized with a compile time constant. Then we can write if and then within parentheses we need to add our condition. In this case age less than 16. And then we need to open some curly braces. And inside here we can print junior ticket like this. And we should also print price is $8. And we need to remember to escape the dollar symbol because it's a special character. And at this stage we can already run our program and as we can see it prints these two strings. But as we can see in our requirements we also need to print this line telling our customers to enjoy their visit. And since this applies regardless of age then after the curly braces we can print enjoy your visit like this. Once again we are doing this outside the curly braces because we need to print this line in all cases and if we run again we can see that now all three lines are printed. However if we change this age to 62 and we run the program again we can see that only the last line is printed and this is not correct. So let's add a new condition to address this. So over here we can type else if age greater or equal than 60. And again we can add some curly braces. And then inside here we should print these two lines. So to make our life easier we can copy these two lines and paste them here. And then we can update this to senior ticket and the price is $6 like this. And if we run the program again we can see that all three lines are now printed correctly. Finally we need to handle the case where we have a regular ticket. So over here we can type else and then another pair of curly braces and once again we can copy these lines and paste them here and then we can update this to regular ticket and the price is $10. And now we can change the value of this age to 40 and if we run the program one more time we can see that everything still works fine. So as you can see if and else statements are very useful and we can use them to write conditional code inside our programs. So it's now time to do an exercise. For this exercise I'd like you to define two integer variables called net salary and expenses. Then you should write a program that prints different sentences depending on these conditions. 
If the net salary is greater than the expenses, you should print you have saved net salary minus expenses this month. Otherwise, if expenses is greater than net salary, you should print you have lost expenses minus net salary this month. And otherwise, you should print your balance hasn't changed. And then you should verify that the program works correctly for different values of net salary and expenses. So you can pause the video and try to solve this. Okay, so here is the solution. First of all, we need to declare these two variables with some example values. So here we can type const net salary equals 2000 and const expenses equals 1800. Next, let's implement this logic. So over here we can type if and then within parentheses net salary greater than expenses and then we can open curly braces and then we can print this sentence. So here we can type you have saved and then we have to add the dollar symbol and escape it with a backslash like this and then we can use string interpolation and type net salary minus expenses like this and add this month at the end like this. And if we run this program now we should read you have saved $200 this month. Then let's implement this condition. So here we can type else if and then within parentheses expenses greater than net salary and then we can add curly braces once again and to make our life easier we can copy this statement from here and paste it here and then we can update it to you have lost and here we need to swap expenses with net salary like this. And now we can change this value to 2300 for example and if we run this again we can see that the output says you have lost $300 this month. Finally we can add one more else statement and inside here we can print and then within single quotes we can put this string. So I'm gonna copy and paste it and I need to remember to escape this character like this. And to test this we can change this value to 2000 and if we run this we can see that the program is correct. Ok, so let's continue on the next lesson. Let's talk about while loops. We can use while loops to execute a block of code multiple times. So to write a while loop we can type while and then within parentheses we need to add a condition and then some curly braces just like we do with if statements. And this condition needs to be a boolean expression. To help us with that here we can type var i equals 1 and here we can update this to i less than or equal to 5 and then inside the curly braces we can print i and also we can add i plus plus and this is the increment operator. So what this does is to increment the value of i on every iteration of this loop and this is necessary otherwise we would end up with an infinite loop because this condition would always be true. So by doing this inside the loop we can make sure that i will increment to 2, 3, 4 and 5 and once i becomes 6 then this condition will be false so that we exit the loop and our program completes. As a proof of this I can add one more print statement at the end which says done like this. And then we can run the program and as you can see the output is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, done. Ok, so let's make this program a bit more interesting and what we want to do is to modify this while loop so that it prints this output where in each iteration of the loop we print as many characters as the value of i. So inside the print statement we can replace this with a string literal that contains the x character and then we can multiply this by i. And if we run the program now we can see that the output is exactly what we wanted. So by using this syntax that uses the multiplication operator we can concatenate a string as many times as the value of i. So that on the first iteration of the loop i is 1 and so we show a single character and on the second iteration of the loop i is 2 and so we show x two times and so on until 5 and then we exit the loop and print done. By the way, in this example we have been incrementing i by 1 on each iteration of the loop, but if you want you can put any logic you want in here. 
In fact, while loops are generic control flow constructs that are made of three main steps. First of all, we perform some initialization, then we evaluate some condition, and if this condition is true, we execute the code inside the body of the while loop. And then we evaluate the condition again, and keep performing this loop while the condition is true. And as soon as it becomes false, we exit the loop. So the counter increment program that we have seen is just an example, but you can put any logic you want inside your while loops. Ok, so let's continue on the next lesson. In the last lesson we learned that we can use while loops to execute a block of code multiple times. Alongside while loops in Dart we also have for loops, and we can use them to perform the same work that a while loop does but with a more concise syntax. So let's see how we can rewrite this program so that it works in the same way but using a for loop. And I think it will be useful to comment out the old code so that we can keep it around for comparison purposes. And I'm going to show you a little shortcut to do this quickly. So here I can select all these lines and once we have done that we can press command slash on Mac or control slash on Windows and you can see that all this code is now commented out. And you can use this shortcut to toggle multi-line comments like this. Ok, so let's rewrite this code using a for loop. So over here we can type for and then inside parentheses var i equals 1 and then a semicolon and then i less or equal than 5 semicolon and then i plus plus. And then we can open and close curly braces. And inside here we want to add the same print statement that we add in the while loop. So here we can copy this and paste it over here. And if we run the program now, we can see that the output is still the same. And as you can see, by using a for loop we have managed to move the initialization, condition and increment code all in one line. And this is quite nice, because these three steps control how we iterate inside the loop. As a result, inside the body we only need to worry about the code that is executed in each iteration. And just to be clear, when we use a for loop, the code is executed in this order. First of all, we perform the initialization step, then we evaluate this condition, and if the condition is true, we execute the body of the loop. And then we perform the update step, and we check the condition once again. And once the condition is false, we exit the loop. And just to be clear, the initialization step is only executed once when we enter the loop, while all the remaining steps will continue to be executed as long as the condition is true. And as we can see in this diagram, the control flow of a for loop is very similar to a while loop, with the difference that the update step is included explicitly in the definition of the loop. By the way, in Dart there is another variant of for loop that we can use to iterate through collections of values, and this variant looks like this. But we are not going to cover this right now, and instead we will learn about collections in detail and see how to use them with for loops in the next section. So I can remove this for now, and we can continue on the next lesson where we will do an exercise. In this exercise I'd like you to implement the FizzBuzz algorithm. FizzBuzz is a common problem that is often given to candidates during job interviews, and it is a good problem in that it challenges you to use control flow statements as well as arithmetic and logical operators. So here is what I'd like you to do in this exercise. Write a program that implements the FizzBuzz algorithm, which is defined like this. For i that goes from 1 to 15 to the following. If i is divisible by 3 and 5, you should print FizzBuzz. Otherwise, if i is divisible by 3, you should print Fizz. And if i is divisible by 5, you should print Buzz. And if none of these conditions apply, you should just print the value of i. And as you can see, to solve this problem you'll need to nest an if statement inside a for loop. And as a hint, you'll need to use the integer modulo operator and the logical end operator. So you can pause the video here and try to solve this, and next I'll show you the solution. Ok, so let's solve this together. First of all we need a for loop that starts from 1 and goes to 15 and increments by 1. Then inside the loop we need to check if i is divisible by 3 and 5. And the key thing to remember is that i is divisible by 3 if i modulo 3 equals 0. 
Likewise, i is divisible by 5 if i modulo 5 equals 0. And because we need both conditions to be true at the same time, here we use the logical and operator. And inside the body, we can type print fizz buzz like this. Then let's take care of the remaining conditions. So here we can type else if i modulo 3 equals 0. Then we can print fizz. And then we can type else if i modulo 5 equals 0. Then we can print buzz. Finally, if none of these conditions are true, we can print i. And if we run this program now, we can see this output starting from 1. So we get 1 and 2, and then 3 is divisible by 3, so we get fizz, and then 4. And then since 5 is divisible by 5, we get buzz, and 6 is divisible by 3, so we get fizz, and then 7 and 8. And then 9 is divisible by 3, so we get fizz. 10 is divisible by 5, so we get buzz. 11, 12 is divisible by 3, so we get fizz. 13 and 14, and finally 15 is divisible by 3 and 5, so we get fizz buzz. By the way, there are other implementations of the fizz buzz algorithm that produce the same output. So if you implemented this in a different way, but your output is the same, then congratulations for finding a different solution. As you can see, control flow statements are very powerful, and we can combine loops, arithmetic and logical operators in any way we want. Ok, so let's continue on the next lesson. In this lesson, we are going to learn about break and continue, which are two keywords that we can use inside for and while loops. To do this, we are going to use the fizz buzz program that we completed in the last lesson. And before showing you how break and continue work, I want to make a small change to this program so that it runs all the way to 16 rather than 15. And outside the loop, I'm also going to add a print statement that says done, like this. So if we run the program now, we can see that it goes all the way to 16 and then it prints done when it's finished. Ok, so let's see how break works. Break is a command that we can use to break out of the loop at any time. For example, if I add a break inside the first line of the loop body and I run the program again, I can see that the only line in the output now says done. And this means that none of this code has been executed. In fact, that part is kind enough to tell us that these lines are dead code. And dead code is code that will not be executed under any circumstance. And Dart is smart enough to figure this out at compile time, because it can see that this code breaks out of the loop as soon as it started. Ok, so let's remove this line, and instead let's try to put a break statement right over here, after printing fizzbuzz. And if we run the code now, we can see that we get every line all the way to fifth buzz, but the number 16 is not printed, and that's because we break right after printing fifth buzz. Next, let's see how to use continue. So over here we can add a new line and type continue, like this, and we can also do the same thing over here and add a continue statement, like this. And the way this works is that as soon as the program encounters a continue statement, it goes straight to the next iteration of the loop without executing the rest of the code inside the body. As a proof of this, we can remove all the else statements from this program. So I can remove this else, this else, and this one as well, along with these braces. And I can format the code to make it look better. And if we run this again after making these changes, we can see that we get the correct output all the way from 1 to fizz buzz and then we get it done at the end. So by using break and continue, we have altered the flow of this program in such a way that we no longer need to use else statements inside the loop. And just to clarify how this updated program works, let's think about how it runs in each iteration. So we start off with i equals 1. And because none of these conditions are true for i equals 1, then we execute this line and we print 1. And the same thing happens with i equals 2, because 2 is not divisible by 3 and 5. So after printing 2, i is incremented to 3, and in this case this condition is false, but this condition is true. So we print 
fizz and then we continue and ignore the rest of this code which means that we don't reach this line and instead we increment i to 4 and we execute the loop again. So if we follow the program step by step as i is incremented all the way to 15, we can prove that this program behaves exactly in the same way as the old one. In summary, you can use break and continue to alter the control flow inside a for or while loop. In this specific example, break and continue were not necessary because we could implement the same logic using if and else statements. But there are cases where you might find them useful, so I wanted to explain how they work in this lesson. Ok, so let's continue on the next lesson. In this lesson, we are going to introduce a new control flow statement called switch. To better understand what a switch is and where it might be useful, consider this example. Suppose that you've run a race and this variable represents your position at the end of the race. So if your position is number 1, then you should get a gold medal. And if your position is number 2, you should get a silver medal. If your position is number 3, you should get a bronze medal. And if your position is anything else, you should not get a medal. As you can see, to write this program, we need a lot of if and else statements. And if there are even more cases than this, then the resulting code doesn't look very readable. Instead, we can rewrite this logic using a switch statement. To do this, we can add a line here and we can type switch and then within parentheses position like this and then we need some curly braces and then we need to list all the different cases that we want to handle. So here we can type case1 colon and then we can copy this print statement and here we can add a new line and paste it. And after this we need to add a break statement to ensure that we exit the switch statement after executing this code. And then we can add case2 colon and then on a new line we can copy this print statement and paste it here. And then we can add break once again and then we can type case3 colon and then we can copy this and paste it over here and add another break. And finally we need to handle all the remaining cases. To do that we can use a special keyword called default like this. And in here we can add the last print statement and break for the last time. So default is like a fallback that we can execute if none of the previous cases was matching the value of our variable. So if we want we can run this program and as you can see the console shows gold twice because both the switch statement and the if else chain print the same thing. And if we change this value to 2 and we run again, then we get silver twice. And if we change this value to 3 and run again, then we get bronze twice. And if we change this to anything else, for example 6, then we get no medal. So this code that we have written works exactly in the same way as our previous chain of if else statements. But arguably we can say that this is easier to read because we can see up front which variable we are switching on and then we have a list of cases. So even though this code requires a few extra lines of code than the if else version I think it's better overall. Ok so let's remove all these if else statements and before I continue I want to point out one common mistake that people often make and that is to forget to add a break statement at the end of each case. So let's remove this break statement from here and as you can see we now get an error telling us that the last statement of the case should be break, continue, rethrow, return or throw. Now we haven't encountered some of these keywords just yet but for now you should be aware that there are multiple ways of breaking out of a switch statement. Break is the most common way but if you want you can also use continue and this will cause your switch statement to execute one more time and we'll learn about these other commands later on. Ok, so let's put back our break statement and we can continue on the next lesson. In the last lesson we have used this integer variable to match our position with the corresponding type of medal using a switch statement. But as we can see there are only 4 cases that we would like to represent and it would be nice to have a special type that we can use to represent all these 4 cases. And to do that we can use a special feature of the Dart language known as an enumeration. So let's see how this works. Over here above the main method we can type enum medal with a capital M and then we can open and close curly braces 
and inside here we can list the different types of metal that we want to represent. So we can type gold, comma, silver, comma, bronze, comma, and no metal, like this. And we have included no metal as a value because this is one of the cases in our switch statement. So what we have just done is to define a new type. This type is called metal and it has four possible values. And now that we have this, we can declare a variable of this type. So here we can type metal, metal equals metal dot. And as you can see, Dartpad can suggest the values that are available for this type. So here we can choose gold, for example. And this is how we declare a variable of type metal. By the way, when we work with enumerations or enums, type inference still works. And this means that we can declare this as var, final or const, like this. Okay, so let's see how to update our switch statement to use this variable. And here we can remove this old position variable. And then we can update this line to switch metal. And now we get an error because we are trying to match this variable of type metal with these values of type int. So let's fix this. And here we can type metal.gold as well as metal.silver and metal.bronze. And here we could use default to handle the remaining case. But since we have defined a specific case inside our type, we may as well write case metal.no metal like this. And now we can run the program and we can see that the output says gold. So this is how enumerations work. And the really important thing to understand here is that when we declare an enumeration like we have done here, we are defining a type that carries a lot of meaning because we can explicitly define all the possible values that are allowed for that type. And the code that uses that type is much more readable as well. So if you find yourself in a situation where you need a variable that can only have a predefined set of values, then you should consider creating an enumeration type because the resulting code will be a lot clearer and the type system can catch type related errors when you write your code. So what are some good examples of enums? Well, we could define an enum for the day of the week and this would look like this. And representing the day of the week like this is much better than using an integer with values 1 to 7. Or if you're playing a game of cards, you could have an enum suits which defines hearts, diamonds, clubs and spades. By the way, I'd like to point out one small detail, and that is that in these two examples I've added a comma at the end of the last case in the enum, over here. And whether you add the last trailing comma or not, the resulting code is valid either way. But there is one subtle difference, and that is that if you remove this trailing comma and then you format the code, Dartpad will inline all the cases like this. On the other hand, if you put back the trailing comma and format again, then Dart will list each case in a separate line. So in general, I recommend keeping the trailing comma so that you don't end up with very long lines when you have a lot of cases. And this formatting rule applies not just with enums, but with any comma separated list of values that you write in your programs. Okay, so let's continue on the next lesson where we'll do an exercise. In this exercise, I'd like you to implement a simple calculator. So given the following incomplete program, use a switch statement to add all the remaining code so that the program produces the following output using the given variables. 4 plus 2 equals 6. And you should also make sure that the program still works as the inputs change. So here are three examples of this. So you can pause the video now and try to solve this. Okay, so let's do this together. As required, we need to use a switch statement so that we can calculate different results depending on the input operation. So we can remove this to do, and here we can type switch on the op variable, and then open curly braces, and then inside we can type case operation dot plus, like this, and then we can print the result using string interpolation. And as you can see, we don't want to print just the result, but the input values as well. So inside single quotes, we can type $a plus $b equals, and then dollar, and then we are going to use curly braces and put the result of a plus b, like this. And then we need to add a break statement. 
So if we run this program now, we can see that it prints 4 plus 2 equals 6. Of course, we need to implement the remaining cases. So we can copy these lines here and paste them over here. And then we can update this to minus and we can use the minus sign inside the print statement like this. And we can do the same thing for the multiply and divide operators. And now we can test this program with different inputs. So if we set the operation to minus and run the program, we see that the output is 4 minus 2 equals 2. And we could change this to 6 and this to multiply. And if we run again, we get 6 times 2 equals 12. And we could change this to 3 and this to divide. And if we run one more time, we get 6 divided by 3 equals 2. Okay, so this completes our exercise. And in fact, we have completed this entire section about control flow. So feel free to do some more practice with if and else statements, for and while loops, switch statements and enumerations. In any case, we'll be using them extensively in the rest of the course. Okay, so let's continue on the next section. This is the end of the fourth chapter. As a reminder, you can buy the full course on Udemy and get access to all the premium content that will not be included here on YouTube. So type this URL in your browser to buy my full course for a discounted price. Thank you very much for watching and if you found this useful, please like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next video.